Implementing Office Standards is a highly recommended practice for all architectural studios. In ArchiCAD, the second big half of what a template is, apart from the navigator, visual libraries, and other presets, is all ArchiCAD's attributes. When your attributes and other template features are set, you can focus more on design and thus improve efficiency and project deliveries. What's up guys? Welcome back to our channel. Uh, best practices workflow as usual. Uh, we, are, we are a channel dedicated to maximizing work efficiency and productivity as far as design softwares are concerned. In today's video, we'll be covering an interesting arcade tip and trick all about arcade elements and attributes. We are going to learn how to use and edit attributes. Uh, we'll cover tips on how we can customize attributes or create new ones and you know basically introduce you on how to uh, set up your own attributes and how to use our own attributes that come with ArchiCAD and as well as the MSBeam template. Basically, uh, we'll personalize attributes to suit one's needs. Uh, as you may know, attributes uh, once saved can be opened into a different computer. So your customized attributes are available in the next project. So this is in terms of improving consistency with your project deliveries. Uh, hence the importance of template. We could help you to set up your know, office standards if you follow through this video so as to avoid things, so as to avoid to uh, repetitive work because you, you set things once, you know, your pen sets, your key attributes are set once. Your layers, your, your attributes, your, your building materials, your lines, fill pens, and you know, and so on. Without further ado, guys, let's get started. Like I said, uh, today's learning today's learning outcomes are just about working around uh, attributes and customizing attributes as well. So let's jump into it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to set up an office template to manage attributes because attributes are very important uh, in terms of the workflow of your office. Or workflow of your project deliveries. So we're going to cover key attributes, uh, with, 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 which there are many, but uh, I'll cover them in a two-part series. The first video I'll cover the first uh, I'll cover them in, in a chronological order. I'll start with layers, then lines and lines and fills, then surfaces, building materials. I'll cover them all. Uh, stay tuned to the end, and yes. Um, Let's get into it. Layers keep the model well organized, guys. While the 2D attributes such as lines and fill types, fill types help us designers comply with local and global documentation standards, we can boost efficiency and productivity with these attributes, guys, if we follow suit, because we are setting this for life, your workflow. So I'll help you with this implementing, how to implement this in your office, how to figure out, maybe you want to track around the MS Beam template or the ArchiCAD template you you find, or as well as maybe you bought another ArchiCAD from the ArchiCAD template from someone. You could uh, edit this. This are editable. You could delete and so on and make your own craft. So the first attribute I'm going to cover are layers, layer combination, layer systems. So this we are familiar with. Layers are used to separate elements logically. Related groups of elements such as dimensions, furniture, electrical symbols, and so on are placed on common layers. Uh, Arcade comes with a predefined set of layers. And an element can only be in one layer, in one single layer. And for each layer, you can define the following. You could lock, you could lock, unlock, show hide, and the DV mode, and so on. So this meaning emphasizing that layers are good for management of your or workflows or organizing your drawings organizing your design by you can lock you can hide and all of that it's all about management of your design workflow like you you don't want to let's say you have a floor plan uh, with um, a lot of a lot of 
design work, a lot of drafting, so you could hide others and lock others and view others and so on. It's just about that. It's all about organization. It's all about helping you work efficiently, work, working smart and so on. All right. Where do you find the layers? Um, you go to options, element attributes and layer settings or, you, you know, document layers, layer settings and so on. Shortcut is control L for layers where you could create your new layer. You can rename and the left panel list existing. It's, it's just about layer combinations. This works well in the layer combination works well with view settings like this. Let's say you say save a view. You don't want things to show up in a certain view. That's where you hide layers. This is where the hiding part works on in layer combinations. And then the right side list is layer defined in the project. So here you could create new layers. You could add more layers. And in Arcade 26, you see that these layers are organized uh, really nice as in terms of the developing, looking where Arcade is coming from. The layers now are grouped into segments of design, document, and view. Like this is the first uh, in 26, really impressive. And note, uh, the first item on the list here is the Arcade layer. This layer cannot be deleted, hidden, or locked. This layer collects all those elements that may have lost their layer definitions. So it makes sense that we, we should have this uh, standard Arcade layer, you know. And and that's, that's, that's just basically about layers, guys. There's nothing really fancy uh, about layers, nothing more complicated about layers, but just uh, uh, emphasizing the importance of working on layers and yes let, we'll jump into the next uh, attribute Attri attribute number two is uh, lines and pen sets this attribute is just uh, the 2d attributes which I said uh, help in terms of documentation standards you know the drawings uh, appearances uh, from this pens and colors you know the color scheme the line weights that's basically this attribute so we need to know it know it well and know how to set it set, set ourselves and to, to edit and so on to delete and so on just like any other arcade tool we have many available pen set and presets available to us we have a variety of pencils to work with arcade comes with several predefined pen sets uh, these are listed and managed here, you go to options, element attributes, pen and colors. Uh, we have options to rename a pen set and even delete. We could edit individual colors of pens. If we take any of our color pen set and edit the color and select OK, we automatically get a custom pre pre pen set. Uh, we can store as, we can, or we can override or change the name. So let's just delete this and create our own. For this template just i'm giving you a scenario of how you could do this uh, so we have a completely new pen set we can work with it any way we want to create completely new set pens or whatever for whatever purpose we may desire uh, when editing our pen sets you can see as we go through that each pen set has a number a pen weight which can adjust for further illustrations let me just draw this lines here so we could have different perspective of line width and so on. Um, we assign them with different pens. This lines we assign them with different pen sets, and we go to. We can view that two line widths. This is a, you go to uh, view on screen view, and then activate two line width so we could just see how our pen pens would look like on print. Remember, each pen has two attributes pen weight and a pen color and as far as for office standards i recommend you focus on 10 or less 10 or less pens you know you like and just adjust language and store them saving them as a template as a studio template so you don't usually need all this template as long as you figure out you can arrange them properly according to the line weight we can later we can later on access our stored pen sets in saved views at the vmap and at the publishing pages. That's basically where I was saying 
the pencils are good for, for, for prints. Like, you remember, you can have a nice drawing like this. It's still about pen sets, all about working around pen sets, the importance of pen sets. And I hear that pen sets, and that in every software, there's, there's where you have to uh, choose and do your, your pen sets, your workflow and line weight. Each pen has a specific color and line weight. You assign pens to arcade elements in the so like every arcade element you place, you have to assign it to its pen set. Pen set, it has to assign to its pen set. So that's basically it. Um, assigning pen sets to object arcade objects here, just saying lines and fills and so on. So it's just a matter of understanding the concept behind it. So this video is just to make you aware or maybe refine the idea of working with pen sets and line weights. Uh, the last attribute for today, because uh, I think now the video is getting too long, uh, I didn't want to make it long. So we cover fills, just run through fills. And you know, you know what fills are for? Fills are also 2D uh, attributes enhancing our 2d documentations and representations uh, we can do so much with fills in terms of uh, uh, sections decorating our sections our floor plans rendering our floor plans with fills and you ever wondered why how people produce nice drawings nice uh, renders using ArchiCAD? yeah it's because of fills and you know we could use quite a lot for fills and detailing as well fills are there and so on so Arcad includes a predefined set of default fill patterns or fill types. Uh, fills are, like I said, geometric 2D hatching patterns that help you distinguish and decorate the elements of your project. So basically, you could uh, assign fills to every element, your slabs, slabs, meshes, roofs, uh, and so on, you know. So like here, we have fills here, we have, we have, um, just for demonstration sake, uh, we have slabs here with different kind of fills. You know, I assigned cover fills to different cat type, different, you know, objects here, different, different fill types. Uh, how do you access your fills? You can access them here from options, element attributes, like basically that. Uh, we can bring on that uh, toolbar, that, that um, for, 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 for attributes, you know, so that's basically here. You could, uh, these are just fill types where you can define, edit, duplicate, rename, or delete them. So basically, like any other uh, arcade tool, you could rename, edit, define, duplicate, and delete. So this is a workflow you need to know, like the fills. Uh, and I can cover fills are applied to slabs, like I said, meshes, roofs, shelves, mouths, and zones. Uh, so let's edit. Let's say we don't have, like here we have a, quite a lot of fills and some are not in ArchiCAD. So we need to access them in the embedded folders. So how do you access them? You go to fill elements attributes here yeah, and then you choose your fill and, and you could rename, duplicate and rename, and then bring on other fills that are not there, you know. And then the fills as well, you can assign pen sets, pen sets to the fills, how the borderline of the fills are going to look. You know, that's how you control the, 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 the fills, the fill categories, you know. You, you see, we have, we have solid fills, Solid fill that this this the solid fill display foreground only. You can set in the any opacity value and percentage for the solid fill. And then you have the symbols and then we have the image. This we use the image to create a draft, drafting type of fill. And then we can import now fills that we, we don't have. We can put them here. This, this is basically how you put it and self where your libraries are, you choose a fill. This fills, you could uh, uh, basically how to create your own fill. That's just basically it. Like if you don't have uh, 
you know, this is how you customize your, your fill guys, you know. And then to remember to duplicate. Uh, and then that's it. We have now, this was just for demonstration sake, this fills were just created just now, just to um, emphasize what you could do with fills. And then if, if, don't forget the, uh, the, the, the pen weight to assign line weights to the fills. To assign line weights to the fills. So you see this line weights, uh, they, 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 they are sort of a, what, what should I say, call them? They matter in every, in, in every attribute, the line weights. You're going to see in creating um, what you call this, uh, the building materials and composite files, composite materials, the fills will be there again. The, the, the line weights will be there again. So that's basically important uh, about the elements and attributes for today, guys. And we can, in, in part two, I'll show you guys how to import and export attributes to other project folders, other projects, like I said. And stay tuned for the next video. I think I'll, I'll, I'll be done with it in, in two, two or three. Uh, tomorrow, maybe. Yes, uh, I'll be done with it. So to end our video, so just to uh, refresh this, uh, you know, starting a new project using a template is much faster and significantly reduces the uh, the risk of project insecurity and in inconsistencies. You need a template file, guys. If, if you don't have a template, you need to know how to manipulate and work around this attribute. And what, what I think I'll do, uh, I'll do uh, this template, just a basic kit template. You, our patrons will have it, uh, just our setting Simple, simple fills, simple layers, and and and, and simple fills. So the patrons will have it. Uh, please like and subscribe this to this video to this channel. Um, and thank you for the feedback and interactions, guys. And smash that like button as always. Uh, subscribe if you are not have even if you haven't subscribed yet. And yeah, I think I'll see you in the next video, guys in the part two series. Bye for now.